When I was a medical student, I witnessed a very dramatic surgery. It was a young woman in my age. She was a doctor herself, and she had her first baby. During the birth, the uterus ruptured. It just teared open, and she started losing massive amounts of blood. Doctors were able to rescue the baby, and then they were fighting for the life of the mother, pumping liters of donor blood into her. I don't know how the story ended. I don't know if she survived, and I don't know if that baby ever saw its mother. But this story left a big impression on me. It showed me how quickly any one of us, even young and healthy, can get into life-threatening situations, and how quickly we might be in need of blood. As a medical student, I was fascinated by the dramatic life of doctors. So I decided to become a pediatric surgeon. And then, one Saturday morning in 2008, I was the doctor on duty. It was my first year as an intern. There was a five-year-old boy brought to us with the ambulance. He had fallen from his bike, and he had got a punch into his belly from the steering of the bike. So I started my routine examination. I took blood from him. And the hemoglobin concentration, which is a measure of how much blood we have in our body, was 12, which is normal. I start an ultrasound of the belly, and I see lots of free fluids. And that is scary, because it can be a bleeding inside the belly, and it cannot stop by itself, because the belly is a cavity. So I call my attending physician, and then things happen very quickly. We order donor blood, We did a CAT scan, and we saw a rupture of the spleen. And from there, it just kept bleeding and bleeding. So we ran into the operation room, and then I saw the fastest surgery of my life. It was open the belly, get to the spleen, clamp the vessels, take the organ out. By that time, the hemoglobin concentration was at five. And below six is life-threatening. Now, the blood unit had arrived, and we transfused the blood group O negative to that boy. It's the only blood group that is compatible with all other blood groups. It's very precious, and in the hospital, it's reserved only for such emergencies where you don't have time to type the blood group of the patient. So I tumbled out of the OR, still shaking, but I was able to tell the mother, The spleen is out, but your boy is alive. That day, we saved a life. And that was the reason why I had chosen pediatric surgery as my profession. Because you can save lives, one at a time, maybe 10 or 20 in a year. And I thought, that's a very fulfilling life purpose. But I had this fascination for science, I wanted to discover something new. Like a young scientist who was sitting at the same time in a lab in Japan. His name is Shinya Yamanaka. So I decided to go back to the lab to become a scientist. And today, 10 years later, I stand here because I want to save thousands of lives. My passion is blood. I love it. It fascinates me. And I do research about blood since 20 years. And today, I want to tell you about my big vision, making human blood in the lab. Nothing artificial, but mimicking the natural development of red blood cells as it happens every day in our body. This is already possible in a small scale. I can make one liter of blood in the lab, but we need hundreds of thousands of liters. There's a huge demand out there. And that's why I want to upscale the procedure to a mass production. Donor blood is wonderful. It saves lives. And please keep donating blood. It's very important. But it has its own problems. The first problem, there are eight major blood groups. They're distributed in a very uneven way. And as a rule, you can only receive blood 
from the same blood group as you have. Um, if I give a positive blood to a B negative person, that can kill that person. I hope you all know your blood type, uh, your blood group. So now, please find out from the person sitting next to you, the blood group. Who, who, is sitting, who is sitting next to a person with the same blood group? Okay, it is not that easy to find a donor. And there are big efforts made in a hospital to keep track of everyone's blood group. Not to mismatch them. And mistakes happen, and that can kill the patient. It's a big responsibility for the doctors every day, and, for patient, and patients always carry a certain risk every time they get blood. There is one wonderful exception, the blood group O negative, as compatible with all other blood groups. Are there special people among us who have this special blood group? Can you please lift your arm? So look around. So these are the people who can give blood to all of us. <laughs> it's only 6% of our population, and this blood is very, very precious in the hospital. So if I make blood in the lab, I would not keep up such a complicated system. I would just make one blood group, one universal blood group, and I call it universal blood. And when I talk about blood today, I mean red blood cells um, as they are giving, given during a normal blood transfusion. The second problem of donor blood, you always have an infection risk. Getting HIV or hepatitis from a blood transfusion is very low these days, but there are constantly new infections coming up. For example, two years ago, the population of Florida got banned from donating blood because the Zika virus had appeared there. Universal blood would not have that problem because it would be produced in a sterile facility. The third problem of donor blood, we don't have a constant supply, and we cannot store it for long. So we are dependent on how many people feel like donating blood at a given time. The WHO reports that we need 100 million blood units every year worldwide. And only 83 million are collected. What about the remaining ones? That's when people die out there. And it is not that far from us. Also in Germany, we regularly have deficits. And then, even in big hospitals, routine surgeries have to be postponed because the resource blood is missing. And our demand is increasing. About 1% more blood we need every year in Germany. Our population is aging, um, and our medical possibilities are getting better. Like, surgical techniques are getting better, intensive care is getting better, but most of that needs blood, and we are missing that resource. So we need 1% more. But our young generation is not that ready as you to donate blood anymore. And we're having a demographic shift. So within the last years, blood donations in Germany reduced by 15%. So we are driving into a very scary situation. Now is the time to act and change something. While well, universal blood will be produced in a constant production facility and would solve that problem. Now, let's talk about science. I'm a scientist, not a magician. I cannot take blood and magically make more blood out of it. Red blood cells are like flowers. I think they're beautiful. But they have a certain lifespan, and once it's over, they will die. If I take this flower and put it in the ground, 
it won't grow. To grow more flowers, I need a seed. And the seed of red blood cells are called stem cells. And the stem cells produce millions and billions of red blood cells every day in our body. And that happens in the bone marrow. So the big bones of our arms and legs are hollow inside. And in that space sits the nursery of blood cells. There is a blood stem cell that produces a baby blood cell, and that grows and matures into functional red blood cells. And then they get released into the bloodstream, uh, where they do their job of carrying oxygen, of carrying oxygen around. In a normal adult, I don't have access to these stem cells, but I can make them in the lab. In 2012. Shinya Yamanaka got the Nobel Prize for his discovery how to turn a normal cell back into a stem cell. It's like turning a flower back into a seed. From that seed, you can grow up the entire plant. And from that stem cell, I can make any cell type of your body. We call it reprogramming. We take a normal cell and we add a special cocktail to it. We call it the Yamanaka factors. And that <laughs> um, changes the internal program of the cell into the program of a stem cell. And that new cell is called an induced pluripotent stem cell, or an iPSC. And it was a breakthrough discovery to make such stem cells in the lab. But the first iPSC were like the first computers. Their quality was not that good, and they could not be used for clinical treatments, because everything that goes into patients need to meet very strict quality criteria. So I specialized in the technique of reprogramming. And we found a way to make induced pluripotent stem cells from a very high quality. And from that stem cell, I can grow other cell types now. So if I add the blood growth cocktail, the stem cell will produce millions and billions of red blood cells, as it happens every day in our body. If I use another cocktail, I can make other cells. You have a heart attack? I can make heart cells for you. You have a liver failure, I can make liver cells for you. I want to give you one more example. Pancreas cells are the only cells in our body that produce insulin. And if they don't work properly, you get diabetes. Diabetes means you have to poke yourself to measure your blood sugar each and every day. And you have to inject insulin each and every day. Now, I can make pancreas cells from iPSC. We can implant them under the skin, and they are able to measure the proper blood sugar concentration and release the correct amount of insulin into our body. And one day, that will heal diabetes. Coming back to blood, if everything's known, why nobody's doing it for now? Why nobody's producing already blood? Well, we just figured out all these principles. How to make iPSC from a really high quality? Which cocktail to use for which cell type? And now the next step is to upscale. We are now figuring out how to grow stem cells in massive amounts, in thousands of liters. That is still technically difficult, but we are on our way. I want you to take one message home today from this talk. With today's knowledge, we are able to produce human blood in the lab. We are holding the keys in our hands to realize this big dream of humankind. And my vision is a company that produces universal blood, clean, safe, and in unlimited amounts. So no grandpa, no mother, and no child 
needs to die anymore, because we are missing the one resource, blood. Thank you.